Hello, everyone. This is Felicia Bender, the practical numerologist, with your numerology forecast for the nine personal year for April 2023. So, real quick, if you are new to numerology, new to this channel, uh, just um, I'm unsure about what this uh, what. <laughs> What is this forecast based on? Uh, it is based on personal year in numerology, not on your life path number. So those are two entirely different things in numerology. So if you're unsure or unclear about what your personal year might be right now, please take a moment, go to the description box. There is, uh, there's a calculator there. There's a, a definition of of how to understand your personal year. There's also some resources at FeliciaBender.com free resources about how to find out more about your life path, all things numerology. So the only reason I bring this up is because I want to make sure that you are at the right place at the right time, listening to the right forecast. So let's get right into it. Uh, nine personal year, April is a number four personal month. Also understand that, okay, you're like, oh, now I'm confused because nine personal year. And now what do you, what is this for that you're talking about? So the personal year is, is what you're experiencing year long. Um, it depends on, again, there are different modes of thought about the personal year. Some go birthday to birthday, some go uh, year to year. It's basically depending on your, uh, your school of thought, the basic construct here is that it is 12 months. It's 12 months uh, that you're guided and that you're in the nine, the energy of the nine personal year, which is the end of a cycle. The nine personal year is an end of a cycle. It's all about letting things go. It's all about um, releasing. It's all about these big transitions, transformations that you get to experience to, uh, to pave the way for new starts and new beginnings next year. And so that is what you get all year long. Then the number four for your month it indicates kind of a point of departure uh, or a point, uh, it's, it's like a, a place that you stop during your, uh, your 12 month foray <laughs> or your 12 month road trip, right? It's a point of destination and it will have a different vibe, a different energy. It'll have, you know, a different personality and you get to stop there for a four week period and engage yourself with that. So that's basically how these how these um, forecasts are, are rolling out. That's how they are created or constructed here. So with that said, April is the month to batten down the hatches. And this is going to be a time to really examine your personal root system, right? Where you feel anchored, uh, where you feel a sense of security, uh, stability, if you do or if you don't, right? And how to, uh, it's just gonna be really right up there in the front of the line for you to be working with this month. So um, I'm starting off with quotes for all of us, for all of our forecasts this month. It's just kind of nice to have a different frame uh, that in the form of a quote. So we're looking at, and I'm going to massacre his name. I'm so sorry, but it's Lao Tzu, T-Z-U. Um, so um, this is the quote from, from, um, from Lao. And the quote is for you in your nine personal year and particular, particularly for this month is new beginnings are often disguised as painful endings. So we've got to end something before we can start something, right? We can't keep pouring, 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 pouring water into a glass and uh, it not you know, just spill over and not be held there anymore. You've got to empty something before you can put something back into it. That is what's happening all year long for you. And April itself is a more um, serious month. And serious isn't bad. It's just a little bit of stepping back and uh, taking a more sober uh, look at um, what's going on for you within certain within a certain context. So it's going to really ask you to be more practical, more pragmatic than usual. It might feel a little bit like a come to Jesus time uh, right now where you're going to feel pressure to come to terms with, on one hand, your economic situation, uh, what's going on in your financial life and your work life, 
where are you with that? Are you are you good with that or not good? And if 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 not good, how do you want to proceed? If good, how do you want to build? Right? It's uh, all of that. So it's really looking at it though in a down to earth, practical, pragmatic way. Um, so that's going to be coming up for you to visit right now. This can also show up not so much in your financial life, but perhaps in your relationship world, in your emotional life. Remember, it's your nine personal year. Um, you know, it can it can even present itself as a spiritual crisis, maybe a dark night of the soul. So you are in that nine personal year after all. <laughs> so why not? throw it all on the table. Uh, and it depends on where you are uh, in, your, in your personal world with this. So some nine personal years can feel incredibly cataclysmic and some are maybe a little more subtle, but most of the time, this is just a real, real um, transition point. Even if you, if you uh, go back, if you really get into numerology and become a little bit of a numerology nerd, you can uh, go back and, and and track your nine personal years, nine into one. And often those really serve as kind of these punctuation marks, these times, these very transitional pivotal times that you remember, right? Oh, that was when I graduated. Oh, that was when uh, my father died. That was when I had a baby. That was when I got a divorce. You know, other things that, um, you know, that was when I got a new job and moved to another country. I mean, it can be, anything, but it was more, uh, all of those transitions are usually have more weight. They are much more, much more transitional. So think about that as you are working on this year. It's not, you know, um, it's, you're not just making it up. It is big. It is big for you. So even though this can rarely be I don't know, kind of light and airy and fun, there are aspects of it that can be that way. When you are ready, willing, and able to really reinvent, um, it can feel very freeing, but it's not without uh, it's not without emotion, and it's not without a certain amount again of of grief of loss. Because even in the best circumstances, when we lose something, we it's it's um it's good to to spend a moment of reflection and of and gratitude and also of grief around it. So those are things that are kind of coming in and out. They're interwoven into your nine personal year. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity right now to rearrange, to recalibrate your business uh, potentially. Maybe this is a time where you you want to just tweak. You're like, yeah, this is not working anymore. This doesn't feel right to me. How do I, how do I re reconfigure this um, right now? So it's going to be time where where that maybe comes up to the front of the line. Uh, emotional, uh, emotional issues, emotional affairs, emotional not affairs, but it could be affairs. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, but emotional things, emotional connections, relationship connections uh, that have needed to be adjusted. Uh, for a while now can also come into play. So when you experience any cycle guided by the number four, which is the number of your of, of April right now, of your personal month, you're going to be presented with a few curveballs in terms of maybe some weird detours, some limitations. So just expect those and be be kind to yourself. It's okay. Um, so while it might, may sound a little bit obvious, we all know that change is the only constant. Oh, those cliches, they come from somewhere, <laughs> right? So change is the only constant. So it really is true. And yet this is what you are massaging oof, all year long. All right. So give yourself, give yourself a pat on the back and uh, let's move through this together, right? So uh, also this can often be a time where others in your life uh, have outgrown maybe you on some level, right? So often you're outgrowing things in your nine, but you can also be on the on the receiving end of that. And sometimes the unraveling can begin to take shape in that direction. So please don't understand this as a defeat or as a judgment, because by outgrown, this simply means that you are moving into one direction and the person or people or circumstances, whatever that is, they're moving in another, right? It's not good, bad. It's not right, wrong. It's not all of that. Usually it is just, you know, thank you very much. And, and this is a, a, a parting of the ways or just a recalibration, re-situation of whatever those relationship dynamics 
uh, have been, they're moving into something different. So I'm just gonna offer you an example here. This is kind of a no duh, but I'm gonna do it anyway because I think it's always good to, to think about it in, in terms of you know examples, right? So this can, let's just say, this can show up when you've, for instance, been in your 20s and your group, you're in a group, loves to party, paycheck to paycheck, you know, um, why not, right? And now you are in, you've crested into your 30s and suddenly you're like, oh, oh my God, been there, done that um, frame of mind. You wanna have some more stability. You're like, man, I wanna have a career rather than a job. This sucks, you know, I don't, I don't like this. It was okay in my 20s, but now, you know, I gotta step it up. So you, 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 and maybe at this point, you aren't very fond of, you know, waking up with that massive hangover anymore. You don't want that to be part of the normalcy of life. So now you're in the midst of pursuing this new trajectory. Maybe you've, again, just examples, you've limited your consumption of alcohol. You're getting serious about a new training program that's going to get you an entry-level job that has some longer-term potential. So you're really figuring out what industry you want to be in, where you want to focus your energies and efforts rather than just, you know, part-time jobs or just job jobs, right? And then you're simply starting to look more seriously at your life and forecast some longer range plans. What do you really want, right? Um, so yet most of your current group in this configuration, in this example, they're still living in the moment with the focus of conversation about how many, you know, shots they did last night with the aftermath of that crazy behaviors were the walk of shame, the intensity of their hangover, all of that. And they still think it's cool. They still think it's funny. And it's so much drama. And suddenly you're like, I just can't do this anymore. I just, I'm not even interested. I just, it's, it's even like, it's, it's just grating on me. Right. So now what? Now you need a new group of friends who are going to support this up leveling of your life. And that's where the reality of outgrowing comes into play. So this seems obvious. And yet it's always a really uh, cataclysmic alteration in life, how to hit these crossroads and take and take this this direction or that direction. Right. You still keep doing the same thing, same thing, same thing. Or you move into another into another um constellation here another route and with that you're going to um, go a different way than other people that you've been used to being around all that time so this is often on some level what takes place during that transformational or this transformational and transformative nine personal year that you're in so you are moving on right? You are moving on throughout this year and into something that is more fitting for your personal evolution. And in practical, pragmatic terms, you're continuing to grow up and to grow into yourself, your more mature self, not your boring self, not your, but, but more mature and having more of an idea about what you value and who you are, what you want to contribute, all of those things. So no matter what your actual age might be, this is a time of, of maturation. This is time where you're being asked to grow up a little bit, right? So uh, yeah, when you're right in the middle of it, it's, it's maybe not as easy or not as painless or not as clear, right? Not as clear. So around April 4th, you're likely to have some organizational work to handle in regards uh, to something that's moving toward being wrapped up or tied up, all right? This is a month where you're examining your overall sense of security, of stability, and investigating some longer range goals. That's, that's all what the four brings in for you, security, stability, long range goals, responsibility. Um, getting things done, uh, focusing, getting systematic about things, organizing, managing, all of those uh, key concepts are part of the four. Yet under, you know, understand that during the nine personal year, this most likely shows up in the form of experiences that reveal what is not working rather than what is working. Okay. Um, and I want to be really clear about that as much as I can. So it's, and what I mean by that is it's not a matter of, in the nine personal year, I find personally that it's a time where you're, you can be doing great with business and you're, you're all of that. And you can build on that, on the success. And, uh, and yet coming up with something entirely new 
something, you know, um, if you own your own business or, or even a new job or something entirely new, usually doesn't really uh, hash out the way that you think it's going to. So it's more a matter of, um, it's more a matter of building on what exists, but not doing something totally, totally new. All right. Next year is all the new stuff. This time is kind of just uh, minimalizing. Okay. And dealing with what is working. So uh, the whole focus of this year is to bring up to the surface those things that have run their course and that are ready to make an exit. So really the tide is, is uh, you know, is out. <laughs> so let it go, let it go, let it go. So just know that you are already in this highly transformational time with the nine personal year and the energy that you're getting this month uh, with the four demands that you feel into your future self. And you really take some serious efforts to stabilize yourself in whatever way is appropriate for you right now. But it's really important to think about that. It's like, how can you visualize your future self? How can you really project that on the screen of your, of your mind and really put some, some color to it, some feeling, some uh, vibrancy? And that is what you're moving forward toward. That is the experience you want to have. And, you know, law of attraction, all kinds of things will say that that is a very powerful tool of visualization to use uh, all the time. But particularly right now, when you're working on that transformative process, the way you would like to be, the way you would like to envision uh, and, and actually um, be in life. So chances are you will be taking a look at some of your deeper wounding, or should we say maybe programming from your family or uh, the, your family of origin and your childhood this month. So, um, you know, it, it might be time for one of those modalities um, for you to kind of dive in. Maybe it's hypnotherapy, maybe breath work, energy work, any modality that can support this process for you is really right in line. And I give you the, the thumbs up and the please do during this, uh, the month of April, if you're in your nine personal years. So take it step by step, make sure to remember to give yourself breaks and to watch that inner dialogue. Treat yourself like you would treat your best friend or your child uh, with that kind of love, that kind of tenderness. You need that right now. So in April, take some breaks, be even kinder to yourself than you could ever imagine. All right, so that is your forecast for April. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful month. I hope that it, everything unfolds for you perfectly. And I will see you back here for, your, uh, for the forecast for May at the end of the month.